Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Kulecha. I welcome you in this channel. Today we are going to share, uh, I am going to discuss about uh, the five precepts given by the Buddha. Uh, the five precepts basically are like a code of morality that was given by the Buddha, also known as Panchasila. Right? Um, these five precepts are no killing, no stealing, no sexual misconduct, no lying and no drinking. Right? We will discuss each one uh, in detail. Now basically the history behind this is that Buddha gave these precepts to uh, the father of the monk named uh, Yasa. Yasa was the sixth disciple uh, in the Sangha and uh, his father asked that if I cannot join the monk order, uh, how can I follow these the, the teachings? So Buddha gave the five teachings. So this is like how much important these teachings are. It's like the the condensed version of the entire Buddha's Buddha's teachings in a way, not not I will not say because the condensed version I will say the four noble truths and the noble eightfold path. But still, these five precepts any lay person can follow. No killing, no stealing, no sexual misconduct, no lying, no drinking. Right? Okay. So these precepts constitute the first step on the path. So basically, if you want to practice Buddha's teachings, you don't need to you know be a Buddhist or you know uh, kind of uh, there is no kind of a ritual or something that you need to follow. But some and in some places, they have these kind of small rituals, uh, some ceremonies, where if you want to start on the Buddha's path, they give you a, a the five training, the, a, a training on um, the uh, triple gem, uh, Buddha Dharma Sangha, taking refuge in the triple gem and the five precepts. So this is how important it is, right? So it's like the first, first step on the path, right, on the Buddha's teachings. Right. Okay. So we'll go step by step. Uh, first is the uh, precept of no killing. Right. So the, the the intention behind this precept is that every living being, right? Every living being means it may be a, every sentient being, right? Which is a, a human as well as an animals. Plants. Yes, plants also. If we kill them, we take the uh, uh, plant out from the root. That also harms the plant. But actually, following this per precept is in totality is near to impossible, right? So we can do only that much we can do, right? Plants don't have a very refined consciousness as compared to animals and humans. So our thing is that uh, every sentient being, the word uses sentient being uh, by some of the research that I've done uh, on the Bhikkhu Bodhi's work on uh, Buddha's teachings. So basic thing is that every sentient being fears death, right? They don't, they don't want to die. They have this fear, even a small insect, right? And so, if we harm them, if we kill them, then we are creating karma for ourselves. We are halting their spiritual journey, right? Because what happens is every living being in on this, or uh, on the various realms of existence, are you know extinguishing their karma. They are all on their path to liberation. So, if we abruptly halt their uh, uh, journey, we create karma for ourselves. Then, killing maybe by various ways, by hand, by instigation, by missiles, by sorcery psychic power that means any way you kill like some people they have certain psychic powers or they do some kind of a like they have some some like black magic or voodoo all these things also constitute killing right which are a violation of this particular precept then i read somewhere that boiling water even boiling water involves killing tiny even when we walk there is a risk of you know killing the insects right so it's impossible to follow this precept in its entirety we can only do as much as we can uh, Buddha actually told disciples not to travel in the rainy season uh, because he, he said that it, it so that there is we we don't step on the uh, tiny living beings, the tiny insects. That they, that was Buddha's way to 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 stop to do the best to avoid the killing, right? So that's why Buddha's uh, they sangha they used to have a, a rains retreat, right? At the rain time they they did not travel. They were at one place and then Buddha used to give the uh, discourses right now extended meaning of this uh, uh, precept goes to even cruelty right so cruelty towards uh, human beings cruelty towards animals even like uh, 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 consuming like meat and dairy products uh, which involves some form of cruelty right uh, so just follow as much as possible right and not to be in occupations that cause or support any form of killing like arms dealers or you know, uh, intoxicants or, you know, some, any form of killing or cruelty to human beings like human trafficking, slavery, or we, we have to desist from being in those kind of occupations. Then uh, there's this point about the thought of killing, right? The thought of killing is killing itself, right? So we have to 
refine our practice to the extent that even the thoughts of the killing, if they arise, see something they are latent in our consciousness, when these thoughts arise, we do not go into them, we are mindful of these thoughts that are arising in, in us about killing some, because these thoughts are very deep in our our consciousness, right? Many past lives we have been like killing people, killing uh, in animals, slaughtering, butchering, right? We may have been in those businesses, right? So those things are very deep, deeply lost in us. But now we need to bring mindfulness, which is, if you see the uh, whole training on the right mindfulness, right? Be mindful of your thoughts, Satipatthana Sutra, right? Just be mindful of of whatever the feelings that are arising, be mindful of the mental formations with respect to killing, right? This mindfulness is the actually the most important precept actually. We will come to this later on, right? Then uh, another, another thing that I could, could come across, uh, maybe Shayad, this is from Thai, Thai Thignathan. Uh, he said that we should also not be too proud of being non -wise. A Lot of people in some communities, in some religions, uh, which have uh, a hinsa or non-violence as their uh, core, I find them to be very much proud of their uh, of their quality of being non-violent. That is also you are going on the wrong side, right? Because then you are going into another ego trap. We need no, we should not do that. That was the first thing. Next, we come to no stealing. Stealing means not taking anything which is not yours, right? Not taking anything which is not yours. This means maybe in, in a business uh, we should not charge unnecessarily more. Um, we should not adulterate things. We should be very transparent about our charges. We should, do, we should not devise products and services that we know. So it's all about intention, right? If something happens, if killing happens unintentionally, if stealing happens unintentionally, right? Then, then, then there is no karmic implication. But the imp important thing is by our intention should be not wrong. Right? We should not try to steal any something which is someone else. For example, if I steal someone's knowledge, right, for the purpose of making this video, that is also wrong. So if I'm using someone's work or referring someone's work, I should give a reference in the description, which I will be giving, right? So where, what all knowledge sources I've used for my research, right? Giving credit to another person. For example, if, I, if you're using pictures or if you're using something of some, which belongs to someone else, at least you should give proper credit that this belongs to this person, right? So we need to be aware of that. Uh, property includes tangible as well as intangible, that means goodwill, trademark, right? Okay, it also includes not taking credit of others' work, right? And giving due credits wherever uh, necessary, right? So in our daily life, we need to also remember that. So if you see, all these five precepts actually go back to the, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, Noble Eightfold Path, which is like, no killing is, is in right action, no stealing is in right action. No sexual misconduct is in right action. Right? Uh, no lying is in right speech. Right? And uh, no drinking, maybe I can put it in um, right action. Right? Uh, not exactly, I cannot find a correlation, but we can put there. Right? Or maybe right view. Right? Because it alters our mind, so we cannot see things properly. Okay? So what we did was, no stealing we understood. Right? Third, we come to no sexual misconduct. Sexual misconduct means anything that basically harms the uh, marital relations, marital fidelity, harms the, you know, people around you. That means uh, children, parents, society, right? Any sexual act, right, which basically harms uh, uh, the, the stability of the family structure, of the marital structure, right? So, which includes, uh, so basically we should engage only in sexual relations, relationship with people who uh, who basically there is a base of love and the relationship is made known to friends and family so this basically uh, excludes and, and uh, uh, all these one night stands extramarital relationships incestuous relationships right child abuse all those things desist right desist from these things they create a lot of karma and it harms not only you uh, the uh, the other person but also many people around you Right? So, again, be mindful, we can be mindful of our interactions with the opposite sex. Because see, again, sexual desires, lust, these are all things which are deeply embedded in our consciousness. They just need a kind of a outlet, right, to, to express themselves, right. So, basically what we need to be more mindful of 
our interactions with opposite sex and practice a lot of uh, practice immediacy in coaching coaching terms we use this term immediacy that means if we find that we are going some in wrong direction immediately change the course right again there are a lot of things uh, uh, about sex before marriage or lgbt relationships important thing is again the interpretations will differ with different people right there is only see your conscious what works for you but i will just say it should be based on a long term love relationship and should not be just a fling just not be to fulfill your sexual craving right uh, that you can just keep in mind even um, uh, 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 pornography films commercials magazines that promote sexual uh, desires right they they also break families so we should desist from that right then we come to precept number 4 is no lying right we during a day you can just if you are if you are mindful one per day you choose and you will see how much lies you speak you we everyone right because day to day basis we we just you know it's like because we don't have control over tongue and we think the easy way out lying is like easy it's harmless but no uh buddha says precept number 4 says that we should not lie because lies what they do is that we can think that it's like um uh, harmlessly i am saying something but it can create problems not only for you but for others uh, the trust issues can happen it can if the lie is a big lie it can cause mass suspicion there are communities that get broken because of lies right so very very careful i will not lie have that courage that i will only speak the truth right uh, there is this saying that you know if the truth is for the well being of something someone else then it is okay uh, if you seriously read actually the serious interpretation of uh, the buddha's teaching precepts is not even like that right you don't say lie just because it will benefit someone else the only thing i will say is that you utter a lie is where uh, it, there is a like a matter of life and death for you right it's a question of your survival there also you should not but there is somewhere the impact see it's again if you see the karmic implication it the 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 weight of that karmic implication depends it's totally relative from situation to situation a person who is facing no problem it's everything is fine with him he says a lie and compared to a person who is in a very bad problem and it is a matter of life and death for him and he says a lie there is a difference between the karmic implication uh, of that particular lie right so just go by your conscious follow as much as possible it is not like a commandment there is nobody that is who is going to come and punish you right like in other uh, like in religions like christianity and all they have this judgment day and you know commandments are there these are not commandments they are just guidelines right then not spreading the news that you cannot confirm right a lot of things especially in the today's world in whatsapp and all we share lot of things on social media and all without verifying checking the authenticity of the facts there are media media trials that happen and because of which innocent people who who are not guilty who they they get punished right so uh, we have to exercise restraint right precept number 5 no drinking so that means no alcohol or even related substances even i will say it includes to anything that alters our mind right which is includes drugs which includes uh, even i will say smoking the the exclusion is prescription medication right any prescription drugs if you take this is by the doctor that is diff- different but anything we use to alter our mind right uh, it it is a it is a it, no, it should not be done what happens is because our when our minds when our senses when our mind is not in control then we end up doing things that we let later regret right because our discerning capacity our discretion capacity is gone so we will not drink alcohol even social drinking we should avoid with full determination avoid social drinking right thai says i have, i have just put some paras by thai thai says that the be aware that your fine body has been transmitted to you by several previous generations and your parents destroying your body with alcohol and other intoxicants is to betray your ancestors your parents and also to betray future generations right then there is another thing what angle that thai gives is that a lot of grain is needed to produce alcohol so the more the more we consume alcohol we need to just keep in mind that for every glass of alcohol that we consume there are several people who are just who starve because of that because they do not get that grain right 
because of that one glass of alcohol the more our perception deepens the more our practice deepens we start seeing the suffering in a glass of alcohol or even a glass of milk the suffering that 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 happens to the cows right or or in a you know plate of meat right the suffering that has under that the animal has undergone right so let it happen naturally right don't force anything on you because if you force anything for you then what will happen is that cravings will arise let them happen naturally step by step now thai says another important interesting thing is that if you want to drink drink but drink it with complete mindfulness right complete mindfulness if you live drink it with deep mindfulness over time you will just stop it right but what generally happens is we are lost when we do all these things sexual misconduct and all these things lying and everything if at all you need to do do it with full mindfulness and actually if you are in full mindfulness it will be very difficult to do these things like killing lying stealing all these things right what we are thai very wonderful thing that thai says is that all these things all these violations that we do is basically because we have a void we are suffering and we have a void and we try to fill that void through all these things right uh, the 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 what our approach we need to change is we need to sit with our suffering recognize the suffering as it is arising and falling rather than getting going into these things right as then thai says a uh, thing uh, that someone said that i don't get drunk i only have like one uh, this is from his book uh, the heart of the buddha's teaching so uh, the person says to thai that i don't drink i i, I don't get drunk i just have a social one glass of one glass is allowed so thai says that one glass is fine you are basically what you are doing by drinking that one glass you are actually watering the seeds of the alcoholic behavior that you have one glass leads to second second leads to third third leads to fourth right so again so that is where you need to exercise your discretion what leads to what right too many children suffer because the parents are alcoholic just thai says just stopping is a compassionate act for future generations and also for our friends right then a few further points that i would like to state already i have stated many points uh, but few points are these are commandments these are not these are not commandments these are only guidelines as much as possible follow there is no god like in buddhism there is no we don't have like a god that will come and punish you we punish ourselves we create suffering for ourselves through our wrong actions right so then uh, thai says mindfulness being mindful in our thoughts in our feeling in our daily activities this is actually the most fundamental precept if you are following that precepts then you don't need to take care uh, then you don't need to worry about the other precepts because the other precepts will start happening naturally your intention should be that be mindful of every moment how the thoughts are arising in you right be aware be alert don't lose yourself right in lot of things so if at all there is one precept that you want to take let it be the precept of mindfulness don't force these precepts on yourself as well as anyone else just keep reminding yourself back coming back to these precepts you can have it like written somewhere which you can like maybe uh, uh, read once a week right and then co- keep coming back to these precepts allow, allow them to arise naturally in you when buddha was about to pass away he told the disciple ananda after i am gone the community of monks and nuns should look upon the practice of the precepts as their teacher right so so this is how important it is like buddha said let the people take the precepts as the teacher once i am gone right now the impact of breaking the precepts why priest following the precepts is important because they create karma and the impact reaches out to families extended family future generations as well right then there is this thing about like in zen they say that uh, uh, we don't follow the precepts we 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 uh, in zen they just practice meditation so what thai says thai is a zen zen master thai says that no the five precepts are zen zen itself so you cannot say that you are saying you are practicing zen but you are not following the five precepts right so that is a, like a distortion uh, distortion buddha says to me to teach we have to preach by our own lives not just by a sermon or a dharma, dharma talk so our lives should be in accordance with the five precepts that is zen itself so zen is not something separate then uh, 
again the spirits of these precepts are present in all major religions if you see right and you can also if you believe in some other in a particular religion you can go to the precepts of that religion and follow them then these precepts need a lot of study and practice so more than we think because our minds are constantly um, our, the tendency of our mind is to just ignore everything all these things and then go back to our old ways so we need to come come and you know uh, as a family or as a sangha uh, we can you know come back at least once a month or once a week we can recite these precepts like in plum village uh, the community of thiknath han uh, they have this uh, they have a modern version of the precepts which is the five mindfulness trainings and uh, 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 what they do is that they they in the rest they have a recitations of the five mindfulness trainings which is in a way linked to the five precepts so that also i'll give the link in the description you can check that out and uh, uh, thai says if the members of family and a sangha observe and recite these precepts buddhism becomes a living reality so that's what the aim is we have to try and make buddhism a living buddha's teachings a living reality in our life it's not theory it's it's, it's the practical thing that we need to do right so this is it uh, i hope this video was useful and uh, do share your thoughts and uh, your comments and uh, uh, do share your learnings as well in the comment section uh, thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaye namo buddhaye